So first, uh, thanks for having me. Really, uh, really appreciate the, the opportunity to, to speak to you all. Um, so I'm Joe Pickrell, co-founder and CEO of a company called Gencove that develops applications around uh, low-pass whole genome sequencing. Uh, and so my talk today is going to be about some of our uh, collaborations with Element and evaluations of the uh, VD system. Um, structured the talk in three parts here. So first is just a brief introduction to Gencove and us, just to set some context. Um, some validation data on the uh, Avidi system, and then a brief case study on, uh, on one of our customers and how, how, we're, how, we're, how we're using the data. Um, <clears throat> just a, a quick background, uh, so I'm Joe Pickerel. Uh, my background is I'm a statistical geneticist by training, um, PhD in human genetics from the University of Chicago, and I was a professor at the New York Genome Center in Columbia University before, before starting the company. And there I met my, my co-founder, uh, Tomas Barisa, and it, was at, and it was there that we saw that really the power of advances in uh, sequencing hardware. Uh, and and uh, we started the company with the idea to make these advances in genome sequencing hardware more accessible more and more interpretable. Um, and so the reason, of course, don't have to tell you all, is that genome sequencing is providing a new foundation to solve extremely important global challenges, ranging from, from healthcare, things like detecting cancer early or detecting recurrence early when, when, when it can be treated, uh, to agriculture, technologies like genomic prediction, enable more people to be fed uh, with fewer resources to uh, new threats. As, as you all know, uh, coronavirus vaccines were developed by companies that literally never touched uh, a physical virus. They could just get started with a digital uh, uh, genome sequence. And so as genomic technologies are incorporated into more industries and more aspects of daily life, that puts increasing pressure on the underlying technologies themselves. So genome sequencing has to be higher throughput, has to be lower cost, and has to be uh, interpretable. Um, the technologies that are, that are out there from, from our perspective is that you can choose from a, from a few different options here. So if you want something that's high throughput, cost effective, and complete, um, there are technologies like genotyping arrays that are high throughput and, and cost effective, but they don't measure an entire genome. And there are technologies like deep whole genome sequencing uh, that are complete, but they're not necessarily high throughput and cost effective, or definitely not as high throughput and cost effective as, uh, as things like genotyping arrays. And so th these are problems that our, our customers are, are facing every day. How do you get all three of these things uh, at the same time? And so our solution is uh, low-pass whole genome sequencing. Uh, we start with shotgun sequencing of a, of a target individual, generally at less than, than 1x sequencing coverage, probably more like half an x or even, or even lower coverage. Uh, we've developed out software tools for uh, uh, imputation to haplotype reference panels and downstream analytics so that uh, you can go from a, a sample to high quality results at the, the price of a genotyping array or lower while, while getting whole genome sequence information. Um, and so what, what we do, our, our core offering is an analytics platform for low-pass whole genome sequencing. Um, in, in, the, in the human genetic space, uh, we offer imputation, ancestry analysis, polygenic risk scoring, basically at the, at the push of a button. Uh, and for a lot of our customers, we do all of that, plus uh, data management sort of uh, so that existing workflows can start incorporating this data in a really uh, easy to use way. And so we, we developed out all these tools. We put them behind a, a web dashboard, command line interface, and easy to use APIs so that our customers can, can get up and running quickly. Um, and, and some of our customers, this is literally the first time they've ever used sequencing data in their operations, and they've been able to, to, to use this in, a, in an easy to use way. And so the, in, in human genomics, uh, applications range on the research side. Genome wide association studies uh, is probably the primary one in polygenic risk score profiling. And then on the, on the clinical side, I'll, I'll show a bit of data about how we're working in the oncology space for, uh, for things like homologous recombination deficiency testing and, and copy number variation testing and, then, and a number of other uh, key applications. And so uh, the, the question uh, we had was, will just first was, will the AVV system integrate well with this platform. So will the data that comes off the system uh, be uh, readily interpretable and usable uh, by the GenCove platform? And so uh, we, we set up a, a study here. So this is mimicking a, a study that we published last year in genome research. Um, this, is a, this is a figure from that, from that paper where we ran low-pass whole genome sequencing in four different experiments uh, by, on two different uh, sequencing hardware providers. Uh, Illumina and BGI were the sequencing provider, uh, providers in this specific experiment. Um, and uh, we, in uh, this study design, was basically run low pass whole genome sequencing uh, compared to truth data. So we have high genome sequencing data. We run low pass whole genome sequencing data. We leave the individual out of a of the analysis and impute them back and see how how concordant the results are. And so the types of things that we're going to look at: uh, 
or, or similar to what's in this paper. X-axis here is what we call effective coverage, which is a measure of how much genome sequence maps to the genome, as well as how evenly it maps across the genome. And the y-axis is non-reference concordance, sort of a measure of, of genotyping accuracy. Um, and what you can see here is that uh, the primary determinant for us of how well uh, low pass genome sequencing works is this, this coverage metric. Um, and so we basically mimicked this, this study design, but now using the ABD system. So we prepared libraries from 48 uh, Euro European and African samples from the, from the Thousand Genomes Project. Uh, we ran a couple different uh, library prep methods, um, and then we, we pulled them, sent them to, to Element for, for, for sequencing. Um, and we also sent them to, uh, out for, for sequencing on another uh, sequencer as well. Um, and so what we can do then is since these samples have truth data, we take the low pass genome sequencing data, uh, impute to a reference panel, leaving that sample out, and just see how well it worked. Um, and so the first thing we noticed is that there, we get higher effective coverage on the AVD system uh, compared to this reference system due to lower duplication rate. Uh, X-axis here is uh, our measure of uh, how much of the sequence was usable after it came off the sequencer, and these are the different samples uh, on the on the reference sequencer here. This uh, this the, this measure is something like seven to eight percent of the of the of the sequences are optical duplicates on on the uh, on the AVD system. This was this was significantly lower, uh, and I think we now understand after discussion with you all sort of the the advantages of uh, of, of how you're getting to to very low uh, optical duplicate rates, um, and so how does that correspond to to accuracy? Um, and so basically, uh, this, is that, this is that plot that I sh showed you before with different sequencing technologies. Now with uh, the element, uh, the AVD system, and the, and the other sequencer on the same plot, uh, x-axis here is effective coverage, that metric that, that we care about. Uh, and y-axis is, is non-reference concordance. And each point here is an individual. In, uh, in uh, orange is the, the reference sequencer. In uh, blue is the uh, uh, element sequencer. Uh, and what you can see is, well, first, the, the distribution is shifted off to, off to the right here for the element sequencer because of the lower uh, optical duplicate rate. Um, and then at a given uh, level of effective coverage, the, the, the performance is, is similar. Um, and so the, uh, the data, to answer our first question, was is the data compatible with our existing system? The answer is yes. Um, and so then we wanted to go to the, the next step here, which was start to use this on, on, on particular customer samples. And so the, 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 the next step for us was to start evaluating this on more challenging sample types. So for example, uh, FFP samples. And so a specific uh, uh, customer of ours is training a model to distinguish different grades of, of anal cancer, cancer from uh, FFP samples. So these are tissue blocks um, uh, sent to us. Um, and the main hypothesized source of information is copy number variation. So are there particular uh, copy number profiles that are more prevalent in more malignant stages of, of, of cancer than, than in others? Um, and so uh, uh, our question then was, one, I guess, can we prepare libraries from FFP samples that are sequenceable on the Aviti system? Uh, and then can these copy number profiles be measured accurately uh, with low pass genome sequencing? So we developed out a uh, library prep protocol to do this. Uh, uh, made, the, made the libraries, pulled them, sent them again in a similar design for sequencing on a reference sequencer and on, on the AVD system. Uh, similar sort of story as the, as the last time. Uh, so a higher effective coverage on the AVD system due to a lower duplication rate. So here's the effective coverage on the x-axis uh, on these samples on the AVD on the reference sequencer. Uh, effective coverage on the, on the element sequencer, which you can see things above the line here. For the same amount of sequencing coverage, uh, higher effective coverage. And then we started looking into the copy number profiles, uh, and we see a similar uh, accuracy in copy number profiles kind of across the, across the board here. And so what you're looking at is a specific sample, copy number profile, again, from the FFP samples. Uh, so these are, these are somatic uh, variation that we're, that we're looking at. You can see this sample has a duplication of chromosome 1, uh, some, du uh, some deletions here on chromosome 8, uh, and this is highly rep replicable, replicable uh, uh, across systems. And here's an example of sort of a negative control here where there's not a ton of, uh, of copy number variation. Um, and so the conclusion here was the higher effective coverage with the, due to the lower duplication rate is, is useful for a few applications in, in low pass whole genome sequencing. Uh, and we're fully able to sequence libraries from FFP samples um, with the library prep methods and then running the, the uh, OVD system for, for profiling uh, copy number variation. And so, with that, I'll thank everybody uh, involved in this study, 
uh, people at GenCove, Element here, and, uh, and our collaborators at, at Mount Sinai. And thank you for listening. <laughs>